Welcome to PowerCode Music. In this presentation, we're going to talk about the Tascam DP24 Digital Porter Studio and recording acoustic guitars. We know that recording warm, full body, professional sounding acoustic guitar in your home studio is not always easy. However, it is possible to achieve it using the Tascam DP24, the right microphones, a good preamp, and recording techniques that have stood the test of time. Now, in regards to recording acoustic electric guitars with the DP24, watch my presentation, Tascam DP24, DP32 Digital Porta Studio, recording guitars and internal effects on this channel. Now, keep in mind that just like recording vocals, environment is critical. For instance, it's never good to have your neighbor's barking dog as a guest on your tracks. So even when and where you record matters. Before recording your acoustic guitar track on the DP24, it's a great idea and a strong suggestion that you prepare for each session first. Good acoustic guitar recording pre-production involves a number of important factors. Select a room or area that is as quiet and dead as possible. Bathrooms and kitchens are bad choices due to their reflective surfaces, and bedrooms are better because mattresses are great at absorbing sound. If at all possible, treat whatever area you record with acoustic foam, moving blankets, or other sound absorbing materials to kill reflections and reverberations. This approach allows you to capture a performance with the ability to change an acoustic guitar's ambience later without having to re-record the track. Another alternative is to use an isolation filter. Now, isolation filters help you achieve more of a secluded sound uh, in recording studios where the environment basically is untreated. And it can be very effective. Like I use the SC Electronics model and it works really good for me and I highly recommend it. Lastly, depending upon your location, where you are, you may want to consider recording your acoustic guitar tracks later at night or early in the morning when noise levels may be at their lowest points. Let's talk about everybody's favorite topic, using the right microphones. The key to getting the sound that's great for your productions will be using the right microphone for acoustic guitar in your studio in the best possible positions. Now I use the Shure SM57 to record acoustic guitars. Now stay with me here. The SM57 is a low impedance cardioid dynamic microphone. Now, after years of experimentation, I found that it delivers a sound that I like for my instruments. However, it may not be the best choice for you and your environment. Many professionals would agree that recording acoustic guitars requires a wider frequency response specification than what a dynamic microphone offers and the switchable polar pattern functionality of a condenser microphone. With, with this, you want to keep in mind that the industry standard for acoustic guitar recording are condenser microphones. Now, if you use a good brand, they should work well for you more times than not. There are two basic types of condenser microphone. The small diaphragm condenser microphone, known as the SDC, and the large diaphragm condenser microphone, known as the LDC microphone. SDC microphones are sensitive to high frequencies due to their decreased mass of the smaller diaphragm within them. Some common SDCs include the Rode NT5, the AKG C451, and the Shure SM81. LDCs are often brighter and more precise than dynamic microphones. They're available in all polar patterns and many have either switchable patterns or swappable capsules. LDCs require phantom power and handle high sound pressure levels or SPLs fairly well. Some common SDC microphones include the Audio-Technica 
40, 47, the AKG C414, and the Shure KSM32. Let's move on to using an external microphone preamplifier. The audio signals from microphones are weak, and so they need a preamp to translate it into a stronger line level signal. If you want to get the most from your microphone and achieve the best possible sound quality, then using a good microphone preamp is essential. Preamplifiers should be placed in the signal chain between the microphone and the mixer or the recording device. Its job is to precisely and accurately control and maintain the audio output peak signal from the microphone. We will now discuss single and multiple mic techniques for recording acoustic guitar. Let's start with a single mic technique. This is generally the method that I use and is almost always the best solution for musicians who are singing and performing simultaneously in a recording session. This is because it can provide less audio bleed from the vocals than the multi-mic technique would. On the Tascam DP24, tracks 1314 through tracks 2324 are stereo tracks. It's suggested that you assign and record an acoustic guitar session to a stereo track. Stereo tracks are always simultaneously recorded on the device. You cannot record a single track of a stereo track pair on the DP24. The most common placement for a single microphone method is to aim the mic at a point where the neck meets the body. This is usually the 12th or 14th fret on an acoustic guitar. The recommendation is to start with a multi-pattern large diaphragm condenser microphone placed 12 inches away. Be sure to experiment with and update the angle at which the microphone is aiming. You do this along with using and checking different polar patterns on the mic. Use your headphones to check the current sonic setup and make adjustments until you find the sound you're looking for. This is very important. The basic rule is that the more you angle the mic towards the bridge, the more body or low end sound that you're going to get. The more room or environmental sound, you know, if you need more of that, then move the mic a few inches away and then repeat the process. If you want less room sound, move the mic closer and then adjust the angle. Now here's a point of note. Directional polar patterns like cardioid variations are subject to what's known as proximity effect. This means that the closer the mic gets to the sound source, the more low end response, or should I say the more the low end response is exaggerated. If moving the mic closer produces an extreme boomy sound, change to the figure of eight or omnidirectional patterns on the microphone. Omni and figure of eight patterns also can contribute to an enhanced room sound. Let's move on to multiple microphone techniques. Using more than one microphone on acoustic guitar tracks is how you can get massive sounds that can drive a track with full body and support vocals and other instruments. On the Tascam DP24, tracks 1 through 12 are mono tracks. It's suggested that you assign and record an acoustic guitar session using more than one microphone to different mono tracks. That is, one mic per mono track. Now here's a point of note. Using more than one microphone on the same sound source can produce something that's called phase cancellation. Now to manage this issue, you're going to want to do the following. Use a cable tester to ensure that your XLR cables conform to the Audio Engineering Society or AES standard. This confirms that you're using XLR cables at the same electrical polarity. 
Next, use the three to one rule. This means that mics that are pointed at a common source should be spaced in that distance ratio. Now, for example, if mic one is one foot away from the source, then mic two should be three feet away from the source. Now keep in mind this doesn't always apply to mic placement for a single acoustic guitar, but it is a good starting point. Keep in mind that, again, it's not possible for multiple microphones or this type of setup to be completely free of phase differences. But using these two solutions will help you minimize phase cancellation issues when you record. The most common multi-microphone method for recording acoustic guitar is to use a small diaphragm condenser that is an SDC and a large diaphragm condenser or an LDC. This technique is a good solution for either mixing mono to a single track or recording on separate tracks for a stereo mix. The SDC's placement is like that of the single mic setup. Because there's a second mic, it should always be aimed at the neck body joint and kept at least 6 to 12 inches away from the guitar. This placement takes advantage of the narrow, narrower pickup of the microphone. And it also is used to capture more high tones from the string sounds. For a more full body sound and more punch, position the LDC towards the bridge area from one to 36 inches away from the guitar. Use headphones with both mics pan center to check for any possible phase issues. Move the mics in and out and then update the positioning to fine tune for the sound that you need. Now remember to keep checking for phase cancellation issues as you update the microphones. Differences in positioning can change the phase relationship in ways you might not expect. So please keep that in mind. Let's talk about the XY microphone configuration. Put simply, this method uses an identical pair of SDCs set in a stereo XY position. Two common methods fall under this term. The first is true XY, and the second is near coincident. True XY means that two microphones are placed at a 90 degree angle to each other, and with the two microphone capsules positioned so that one is directly above the other, making a V-shape. This configuration has a lot less phase issues and translates into mono much more easily. The near coincident configurations have the mics at an angle to each other crossing in the middle, like this, one directly above the other forming the X. For most SDCs, this puts the capsules about six inches apart. Keep in mind that this allows you to adjust the angle better to define the width of the sound source, giving you more of a defined stereo image with better uh, capture of room ambiance. Now with this comes more possible phase issues and less of a mono capability or translation. If a wide stereo image is what you need, then it's suggested that you use the near coincident configuration. Otherwise, use the XY setup. With these two methods, position the mics so that they are pointing at the neck body joint and at the bridge of your guitar. This means you'll have to adjust and aim the angle each time the distance is updated. Now a suggestion is to use shock mounts with the mics in both configurations. Now let's look at how to record acoustic guitars using the Tascam DP24. Once your microphones and environment are set up to the best of your ability using your chosen method, then you should be good to go to record your acoustic guitar tracks on the DP24. Now to get started, press the assign button to open the assign screen on the DP24. 
use the cursor buttons or press the select button for track one and align the cursor frame on the assigned screen with track one. Use the jog data dial or press the source button for input A and set the recording source of the track, or that is track one, to A. If using the single mic technique, assign the mic to one of the stereo input tracks, that is 1314 to 2324. If you're using the multiple mic technique, assign each mic output to one of the mono track inputs, that is one through 12 on the DP24. Press the home button to return to the home screen. The home screen should appear. And then press the record button for track one. The record indicator blinks and the unit enters record standby mode. Use the trim knob for input A to adjust the input level for the microphone. Set the trim knob so that the OL indicator for input A does not light even when the loudest sound to be recorded is input. Here are some suggested OL indicator markers that you should try to maintain during your recording session. Try to get your OL indicator level to average around 18. Average OL indicator levels should peak at around 12. Try not to let the OL indicator peak higher than 6. An input through an external microphone is shown by the associated track meter. When you raise the fader for the related session track, the stereo fader and the monitor level knob, you can hear the sound of the mic input through connected headphones. Now, here's a point of note. If the OL indicator continues to light even when the trim knob is turned down, the mic signal itself is too loud. In this case, move the mic further away from the sound source or lower the volume of the sound source. You might need to play your guitar a little lighter. Hold down the stop button now and press the rewind button to return to the beginning of the song. Press the play button to start the song and start your performance. You should be able to hear the guitar in your headphones or through your speakers at this point. Use the faders for the related session track, pan knobs, stereo fader, and monitor level knob to adjust the monitoring level and balance. Now, hold down the stop button and press the rewind button again to return to the beginning of the song. We're now going to record. Press the record button to start recording and then play your guitar. The record button will light red and the REC indicator for track one will stop flashing and light steadily. After you finish your performance, press the stop button to stop the recording. The recorded file will then be saved in the folder of the currently loaded song. Press the REC button for track one so that the REC button becomes unlit. And you can then check your recording. In summary, a suggestion is that you always record your acoustic guitar tracks dry. That means don't add any effects to the signal during recording. Add effects to the signal during mix down. Now, in this way, a good acoustic guitar track is never ruined by an effect that you can't get rid of because you changed your mind. If you are careful with your mic placement, the acoustic guitar should sound great without adding any effects during recording, which is the ultimate goal. Well, that's a wrap. If you like this presentation, please give it the thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now and join our group. We have new presentations coming out every 7 to 14 days and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Also, leave a comment in the comment section below. Let us know what you think about this presentation and check us out on Facebook, Instagram and Spotify. Hey, while you're here, check out some of the music and other videos and the playlists because they're designed just for you. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you soon.